Hello, welcome to the Asking Public Library's virtual library. Um, this is our virtual potluck program. I'm filling in for Diana for the intro today because she is in a meeting, but um, welcome. This month's theme is sandwiches. And um, if you haven't joined this program before, the way it works is the we meet twice a month and we have a theme every month. And the first meeting, which will be today is um, cookbook discussion and just chatting about whatever the theme is. So any questions you have, any favorite recipes, if you've grabbed any cookbooks either from your own bookshelf or from the library um, that you'd like to share, I welcome conversation. It's very laid back. Don't, uh, don't be shy to speak up if you want to chat. Um, and then the second session each month, we do a cooking class based on the theme. So we'll do that from my kitchen. I won't be cooking in this room. Um, and you're welcome to cook along with me, or you can um, just hang out and watch and chat, ask questions. Um, this month, uh, our cook cooking class will be on Tuesday, June 21st at 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, nope, that's next month, isn't it? It's May right now. <laughs> I'm like, I'm ahead of myself. Uh, Tuesday, May 24th at 6 p.m. Um, and we're going to make some Vietnamese style shrimp sandwiches with peanut sauce and it's got some quick pickled veggies. It's really good. Um, it's a nice like kind of refreshing recipe for the warmer months. And then June, the theme is picnics and that uh, cookbook discussion will be Tuesday, June 7th at 7 p.m. And then that cooking class is the one that'll be on the 21st at six. And we're making uh, chicken salad with dill. It's like one of my all time favorite recipes. It uses a lot of fresh dill. Um, sometimes I pick another recipe that uses dill just so I can have a bunch left to make this recipe with. Um, and also we'll make some veggie cream cheese roll ups. So those are both things that I've taken to the park or the picnic before. Um, they're a lot of fun. And then we'll be breaking for the summer for July and August and we'll be back in September. And we have, um, I think we have two, two of the four themes for the remainder of the year, uh, September through December picked. Um, always open to suggestions if you have them. Um, and yeah, so um, I could dive right into a cookbook if you want, if anybody has any favorite sandwiches. I know um, this area of New York particularly has amazing delis and sandwiches. Um, if you haven't been to, well, I live near Deli Bagel in Austin. They have really great sandwiches. Um, and if you live outside of New York, the way they do sandwiches here, it's it's insane. It's like they really, really thinly shave the meat on the sandwiches and it's usually quite a large portion of meat. And just the bread is really fresh. The toppings are awesome. They have really interesting combinations. Um, and I, I have a, a link for Rocky's Deli, which is like a 24 hour deli over in Millwood, New York. And it's, that's just their specialty sandwiches if you're ever interested in looking. Um, the craziest one, I think, uh, crazy in a good way. I haven't eaten it personally. My husband has, I've had like a bite of it because it's very rich. It's a chicken cutlet. So it's like a fried breaded piece of chicken, ham, egg, cheese, and hash browns on a roll. <laughs> so it's quite quite the sandwich. They also have a Luther burger. That's a cheeseburger on a glazed donut. I also haven't tried that one, but they have all the standard types of sandwiches also. Um, uh, they have everything I've had there has been delicious and they're like a well-oiled machine because they're open any time of day that you want a sandwich you can go there so um and then in the pdf that you got when you registered for today's program there's a list in the back with some of my favorite local spots so it has cookbook recommendations uh, pertaining to sandwiches recipe recommendations and then some local resources so my favorite's probably a Philly cheese steak. Oh, see, I don't Philly. eat those that often. What um, what do you have like a favorite place that you get it from? Actually, um, I don't really have much in the way of delis in my area, right. but IHOPs isn't bad. Oh, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah, I know. What's that place called? Um, uh, gosh. I can't think of the name of it. Penn Station, maybe? Okay. So Penn Station here is different. It's a uh, train <laughs> station where, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is probably why they named, is it a sandwich place? Yeah. yeah I also, 
I recently saw Jersey Mike's because you have those in your area. I know. I, I love Jersey Mike's. And I, you say the song. Oh, maybe I I've should never had their Philly though. Okay. And What's the go-to sandwich order there? For me, it's the um, uh, turkey provolone. Okay. I love their turkey. It's so good. Yeah. Their sandwiches I, are so much better than Subway. Yeah, I don't. Uh, we have a Subway. Of, it's actually like next door or two doors down from Jolly Bagel here. And I uh, I can't, I, I, my son loved it because it's like, you know, you can pick out all your own toppings, even though you can do that with the deli also. It's just something about the format of it, I think, was really fun for him. Um, but I, I want to try, I want to try Jersey Mix just because I've heard a lot about it. Um, it's over near the Trader Joe's in Hartsdale. So, I saw it, but I was like, it wasn't a meal time. So yeah, I'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> um, the other uh, sandwich that's interesting, and you may be able to do a better job of explaining that than me, but um, in Indiana, I don't know if it's the state sandwich, but they make these pork tenderloin sandwiches. Pork tenderloin. And it's like, um, do you want it? Because you've had more of those than I have. It's like, it's like a very thinly pounded pork uh, tenderloin. Mm -hmm. and it's breaded and fried and usually it's like way bigger than the bun <laughs> yeah it's like you'll be this itty bitty bun and then this huge like piece of pork under so it's like you got the pork and then you got like, this little bun um they're really good though <laughs> yeah I made slider versions of that at home once and they were really good too um, um actually Culver's has one and it's not so much bigger than the bun like that it's pretty good oh interesting I Culver's is like one of my favorite fast food places and we don't have them here. I've, every once in a while I go on their website and I'm like, can you please come east? Because I think the closest <laughs> one to New York isn't somewhere in Pennsylvania or Ohio. It's not, it's not doable. They're, they're <laughs> probably Shake like, well, we can't compete with the delis. <laughs> yeah, well, um, Shake Shack is similar. They have custard shakes and they have, um, their, their burgers I think are just, probably just as good but this is a good segue actually into one book that I'm just gonna like quickly flip through it's it's I didn't thoroughly read it but it's similar it's called um craft burgers and crazy shakes mm. and this is so it's from black tap that's a place it's a restaurant out here in New York so if you notice when you flip the book one so one side of it is burgers and whoever got this from the library before or I think left it in the rain. It's kind of crinkly. Don't mistreat your library books, please. Um, but so you have burgers and then you get to the center, or I guess it's a little past the center. Flip it. Let's flip it. Flip it. Good. Um, and then it's shaped. So this I place magazines would have done that before. Yeah, and this place got famous because they make these insane shakes. Like it's, uh, to me, it just looks like a cup of diabetes. But like, it's, <laughs> like, who could? I think it's more like it's Instagram where they looks insane. They like stick candy and cookies and whatever. They're to it. pretty. <laughs> They're very pretty. I mean, yeah, I would like share with like multiple people probably. But this is not a shake. Sec uh, discussion it's um sandwiches and burgers most certainly are sandwiches and this book has um it's got a good section on the type of meat so uh craft burgers um and they i like i really like the graphics so like very clearly state their preference preference on the ground meat 80 20 is good 75 25 is better and he talks about um, uh, how a great burger starts with high quality meat and at their restaurant, they use a mix of ground brisket and chuck and then they grind it themselves. Um, but at home, they say, if you can't find brisket, ground short ribs would be a solid if pricier substitute. You can also make your own burger from 100% ground chuck. Do not buy sirloin, it's too lean. Fat is your friend when you're making a hamburger. That makes a burger juicy, carries the flavor. So the higher the fat ratio in your meat, the juicier and more flavorful your burger is likely to be. And then assuming you don't grind your own meat, ideally you wanna to go to the butcher and ask him to grind a mix. So I guess it just depends on your area and how much you wanna 
like how much effort you want to put into it or if you have a butcher in your area that would do this kind of stuff but otherwise they say uh, if you're looking for a package of ground biscuit or ground chuck ratio of at least 80 to 20 percent lean to fat if you can find one that's 75 25 even better and he says don't freeze it for optimal texture and flavor you want to use fresh meat save the ground frozen ground chuck for meatloaf so confession i do use ground sirloin <laughs> yeah i mean i just use that for everything <laughs> I, I feel like for me i'm much of the mind that like do what works for you use what you have i mean if it's super integral to the recipe like yes it it, it would probably be better if you use oh i'm fresh sure ground, whatever but like if you already have it or it's like just easier to find just use what you have um but then they have like for their uh restaurant like specifically their method so you only cook it once and they cook it on a griddle versus on a grill use two slices so I like it kind of gives you like the cliff notes if you just kind of um flip through and breeze through quickly mm, the make sauce. It, That's yeah important. make it special <laughs> so their sauce it says um they say a well-crafted sauce highlights the burger and adds a robust spicy or special note without smothering the flavor of the beef making them worth your time. I think ketchup is for suckers or for French fries, but if you ask for it, I'm giving you Heinz. I like Heinz ketchup as an ingredient and a yeah. kind of mother sauce, but not on a burger. Um, talks about buns, they use brioche, which is great for burgers. And I, I thought this was really cute. <laughs> pickles. I love pickles. I do too. Uh, <laughs> That's the most they, important thing that you can put on a burger. I know, there's this um, this uh, GIF, some, don't, don't hate on me if you say GIF, I say GIF, whatever. Um, but it's of somebody assembling a burger and it's like the right amount of pickles for a burger. And it's like, they put their bun, they put their patty and like a couple toppings. And then it's like pickle slice, pickle slice, pickle. And it just ends up being a mountain. And then they just like pour, it's like the table's covered with pickles and <laughs> the bun on top. And my husband sent it to me and he's like, it's not, still not quite enough pickles for you probably. <laughs> um, but so yeah, he gives you like grocery list items. I just, I think the photography is beautiful. It's very creative. Um, and then they give you some recipes for like the all American burger, the California burger, steak au poivre burger. So they have some interesting, um, like classic and some interesting twists. I've never been to Black Tap, so I don't know like if these are the recipes they have at the restaurant. Um, they have a spicy Mexican, they have a lamb burger, a falafel burger, a Texan burger that <laughs> captions is just, oh baby. Mm -hmm. and it's got bacon and onion rings and barbecue sauce. Um, Can't go wrong with bacon. <laughs> yeah, bison burger. Um, so they have lots, they have a pizza burger that looks kind of interesting. So I thought this is, this is a fun book and especially if you've, if you've been to that restaurant um and you want to recreate i guess at home although i'm pretty sure restaurants don't actually give away their full recipes um they save something <laughs> special and then there is a section for the no bun club so i don't know if this still counts as sandwiches if it's like on a salad probably not but um that's a black tap burger salad um yeah that's mostly just salads they're not like on lettuce or anything so, and then there's um, sides and sauces also. So this is a fun book, um, if not a little warped from whoever checked it out first. Do you Shame have parties me. out there? Do we have, uh, no, I think. Do you have Carl's Jr. I don't think we have that either. There might be some like upstate. Um, they have a low carb burger there that's really good. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you get the grilled flavor on the burger and then it's like wrapped in lettuce and it has onions and pickles and all the good stuff. I wonder why more places aren't doing like a low carb bun. Like maybe just because mm -hmm. they don't hold that, like they don't keep that well. And if you don't go through a lot of them, maybe. I know more places are doing gluten free buns. But... Yeah, that's probably, I think that's, yeah. I've seen, um, for like for making wraps and stuff I've seen like it's just like a basically a big round tortilla looking thing but it's cheese and you can use that to wrap up a sandwich or whatever um I'll take the carbs on on, on their behalf <laughs> um 
So on a similar note to that, just uh, about burgers and something that was just kind of interesting visually, this one's called The Art of the Burger. Um, mm -hmm. More than 50 recipes to elevate America's favorite meal to perfection. And um, the paper on this book is interesting. Like the beginning, it feels like, um, it doesn't feel like book, like normal book paper. It's kind of like, uh, not cardstock. I don't know, the texture is just different. I thought that was interesting because like these pages are glossy with the photos and stuff, but the ones that are just words, it's kind of like a little rougher feeling than I've usually see in a cookbook. And I'll just, a lot of- They have more than one kind of paper in it. Yeah. Um, whatever. Yeah, I used to work in the print industry and I know there's things with like cost and like the number of colors you print with. So you could do some spreads that have color but not all, and that would cost less money. So it could have been something like that. It just was kind of interesting. Yeah, like you're saying that there's more than one kind. Um, there's a few interesting tips up front about like the different types of meat. And um, they give two tricks for a particularly uniform and round patty. Number one, the easiest way is with a burger press available online for around $10. Um, and two, if you're making the patty by hand, briefly knead the ground meat with wet hands, then bring it to a round flat shape so that the patty doesn't turn into a meatball. Press down in the middle of the raw patty with the back of a spoon to create an indent. I've always done that just like with my thumb. You just kind of like make a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, but this was interesting. Let the patty cool for at least one hour before frying so that the fat in the meat can harden somewhat, which gives the patty a firmer structure. So I thought that was interesting. I haven't tried that. I think my husband sometimes I think adds a little like salt and then lets them sit in the fridge for a bit. So that's probably like to help draw out. <laughs> Tastes good. Um, so there's recipes for homemade um, buns, including like squid ink, uh, spiced buns that have like cumin, coriander, thyme, red pepper, um, brioche. So there's a bunch of bread recipes walnut buns, whole wheat buns. Um, there's some condiments with just like some really basic illustrations um, for some homemade condiments, pesto. And then there's all of these uh, icons that show how to use this book. So it tells you if it contains pig, beef, veal, lamb, chicken, duck, seafood, fish, vegetarian, or if it's sweet. And then, um, there's little icons for if it's got like vegetables, cheese, fruit, nuts, ice cream, chocolate. Just a lot of lot of stuff going on. Plus, and then there's a ver burger navigator that gives you like the rundown of what's in each of the recipes. So for instance, the Smoker's Empire, it just says beef, onion, pepper, pickles, bacon, and then page 116. So then you can just go flip to that page. And there's the burger. And I love this layout. I think it's so interesting. So you have the recipe over here. And then these are like, can you, I don't know if that comes through all right. They're like little swatches. Oh. Isn't that cool? I've never seen that before. I've never seen it either. It reminds me of Pantone swatches for like, yeah. so it's, it's so cool. Yeah. I thought, and it tells you, um, so I don't, again, I don't know if you can see it too well, but right next to each of these, there are numbers. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's just one number, sometimes it's multiple numbers. It pertains to which step in the recipe you use the ingredients in. Wow. So like the pickles, it's in five and 12. So step five is drain the pickles and slice and step 12 includes garnish with pickles. So I just saw that they, was like, isn't that great? They also include a picture of it assembled. Um, no, <laughs> no, maybe sometimes, but the other cool, uh, I think some of the burgers, do they have any pictures of burgers? That's a, <laughs> I wish they would include both, you know, because yeah. I really like the Pantone type thing, but yeah, so I'd like they, to see it all together. <laughs> yeah, well, some of them are like this instead uh -huh. of like the Pantone. So this is an avo tuna, tuna burger and it's got the bun, the, what is that? Mayo, lettuce, tuna, the condiment and the other bun. Um, 
the fast food samurai. So it's like all these really interesting layouts. Um, I just thought it was so cool, but that there's another one that's like that muy caliente. Just, and it's got like, it's, I feel like it would be a little tricky to follow this as a recipe, but so ingredients are down here in the corner. And then it's like step one is here, preheat the oven. And then two, two to five, seven to nine, 12. It's like a little, mm. yeah. But it looks super cool. Here's another example of like the kind of Pantone swatches. Um, and the names are fun. Like this one is the Mountain Calls. And it's underneath it tells you, cause the name like, well, you wouldn't know what it is from the name of it. It says hash browns, ground beef, dried beef, gruyere, and bacon. Dried so, beef? That's interesting. Yeah, I'm wondering if it's like dried chipped beef. Oh, let's see, 16. Uh, cured beef. Okay, so hmm. prosciutto or brajol. Brajol, not brajol. Brajol is a different thing. But, um, but yeah, like look, there's uh, as art on the wall. <laughs> I just I had no idea when I was uh, picking it's this. It's very out. creative. It's very creative. Like this is all shaped like an egg, and then you've got like a uh, you know outdoor scene. Um, so I feel like this is like just a fun kind of whimsical. I think it's fun to look at, but not to cook from. Maybe yeah, that's kind of where I am with it. So here's some more Pantone kind of swatches. I love that. That was the most I, thing ever. Yeah, I thought it was. I was very pleasantly surprised um, and I just thought it was a cool a cool take on it on ingredients like like that photographer must have had so much fun you know like <laughs> so sometimes I am looking at cookbooks not necessarily to cook out of but um you know should I say Hollywood Hollywood Paul Hollywood? <laughs> no, uh -oh. no I there... thought it said Bollywood in there. Oh, like, okay, I... Let's see. Orient Express. Oh yeah, Bollywood. <laughs> like the colors are just super vibrant. But this has this is a raw chicken leg. It looks like right. These are all the raw ingredients. So it's like a... yeah. So like that's not appetizing. <laughs> I I know those like the choices were made <laughs> when making this book. But overall, I think it's very fun. Like, look at the Caesar burger. It's like it, their groceries fell outside of a car. Like, I just, I feel like this is kind of different level. It's like avant-garde. Yes, that is <laughs> the perfect way to describe it. Okay. I was going to ask you, so where do you stand on burgers that have different meats on it? Like when they throw a chicken patty on with a burger. <laughs> like both? Yeah. <laughs> I mean it's too much meat for me um I, I don't think it looks good I don't even particularly like a double stacked burger like just it's too much um for me personally I you know bacon I'm on how thick the burgers are yeah that's true um like, you know Big Macs those are thin <laughs> right but see I was into the Mac Jr which they don't they won't make even though they have all the ingredients it's just a Big Mac with just one patty and regular number of buns um, they won't make that? No. I mean, it used to be on their menu, didn't it? I know, but it was like a special thing, but it's, it's not like the McRib or something that they don't have the ingredients for. It's literally the exact same sandwich, just without yeah. an extra piece of bread, set of toppings, and patty, but it's all right. <laughs> the best food burger I ever had was from Culver's when they had their pub burger, mm -hmm. and it was uh, on a pretzel bun which was delicious, by the way, oh, and good. it had, uh, gosh, uh, like French fried onions on it, and mm -hmm. a sauce that had like mayonnaise mixed with Worcestershire sauce, Oh, and I can't think what else, but it was really good. That sounds, that sounds oh, and it was on an everything bun. Oh, okay, so I have like a lot, a of... lot of flavor. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, wait. I said pretzel bun, didn't I? They did. have more than one pub burger. Sorry. I feel like a, pre a pretzel bun sounds very pub because, like, you know, like the soft yeah. pretzels with like the. It's, the, 
they had a pub burger though that was on an everything bun and it was so good sounds delicious um so do you have any books that you want to chat about uh, i'm good with what you're doing here okay um so i've got we could go grilled cheese or Encyclopedia of Sandwiches next. What are you feeling? Ooh, Encyclopedia. Okay, so I picked this book up and I didn't know when I picked it up that my one of my friends who's also my Zumba instructor is a photographer. <laughs> um, this is one of his, this one's, a, he's photographed a lot of cookbooks, a lot that I own that I didn't even know. But this is from 2010, so this is a bit older of his photography. Um, but let me, let's see. So it is an encyclopedia. It's got tabs for letters of the alphabet. It is incredibly thorough. So like it goes through letter by letter, all these different sandwiches from very like simple. Some of them are more complex. Um, that I am so glad I've already eaten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like I, I do the cookbook discussions at seven because um, and we do the cooking classes at six because like I, I gotta eat first. I can't, I can't, although granted my job is looking at pictures of food and writing about food all day. So it's like, it's always torture for me. Um, I learned something interesting though. I, this picture reminded me, have you heard of this, the Juicy Lucy? I have heard of that. So I had heard of it too, but I didn't know the story behind it. It's a burger stuffed with cheese, right? Mm -hmm. So um, this says there's each of the, um, items in this encyclopedia, like a true encyclopedia has like a, a description of what it is and then it's followed by the recipe. So this says, uh, when you bite into this inside out cheeseburger, and then they link cheeseburgers page 128. So in case you don't know what a cheeseburger is, you can refer. Um, a surge of gooey cheese flows out from its center. Although everyone agrees that the Juicy Lucy was born in Minneapolis, some credit Matt's bar with its invention and others claim it was the brainchild of the five to eight club. Matt's motto is, if it's spelled correctly, you're at the wrong place. I never knew. It's J-U-C-Y, juicy. Like Lucy. Yeah, Lucy. not J-U-I-C-Y. Um, no matter where you eat one, remember the caveat. Let the burger cool slightly before biting into it. Over yeah. eager, juicy Lucy lovers will tell you that pizza burns got nothing on the blister that will form on their <laughs> mouth from molten hot oozing cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was interesting because I've heard of them before. I don't know that I've actually had one, but I did not ever notice, or I've only seen ones that people spell the word juicy right. Okay. Yes. When you were here, did you ever have a breaded cheeseburger? Nah, I don't think so, but I've heard of it. It's got the cheese inside like that, but then they okay. bread it and deep fry it. Oh and my gosh. it was so delicious. <laughs> I did though. I mean, so bad, but yeah, I did have a um, deep fried peanut butter and jelly sandwich in Ocean City a few years ago because I was like, well, that just sounds insane in the best way. And it really was. <laughs> um, and my grandparents used to make, my grandpa used to make uh, grilled peanut butter and jelly. So, like, just like a grilled cheese where you butter the outside of the bread and you just fry it in a skillet. Uh, it's really good and it just kind of makes the flavors even better. You never did that when I lived at home. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you can do it now. It doesn't take much extra effort and it's like that like crispy crust on the outside is really good. Um, so this has all sorts of sandwiches and then it'll give you like, um, it'll give you variations. So for artisanal grilled cheese, it's like, it talks about how fancy grilled cheese has started taking off in like New York and Los Angeles. And um, it gives you one recipe. So this one has like garlic and cherry tomatoes and sourdough bread, burrata cheese, salsa verde, prosciutto. And then it gives you a recipe for the salsa verde also. And then they give you, um, there's one picture, they give you some sweet and savory variations. So grilled brie, sliced pears, and honey mustard on French bread. Grilled gruyere, caramelized onions, and sage on sourdough bread. Grilled buffalo mozzarella, olive tapenade, and fresh basil on ciabatta bread. Grilled buffalo mozzarella, prosciutto, and pesto on sun-dried tomato bread. 
or grilled Jarlsberg and Granny Smith apple on raisin bread. So they, they have a couple interesting um, variations on a lot of these sandwiches too. Okay, here's a great combination for yes. you. A grilled ham and cheese, dip it in apple butter. Ooh. So delicious. Yeah, it does sound good. I've done um, like apple in the grilled yeah. cheese. Yeah. Like with brie. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. I think I did one once too with like ham, gruyere, and like Granny Smith apples. And I may have put like fig jam or honey or something in there. I'm big on like the sweet and salty. It's always good. Um, this is one that I had heard of before, but I had didn't know the story behind. Baked bean sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Talk about carbs. <laughs> yeah. So this says, and then underneath it says humble New England fare. And it says it's a, a long-standing Saturday night meal in Massachusetts. The baked bean sandwich consists of two slices of thick, chewy brown bread that's buttered and topped with Boston baked beans, a singular sweet bean mixture traditionally made with molasses and brown sugar. And then they talk about like the origins being traced back to the pilgrims because <laughs> pilgrims didn't believe in cooking on Sundays. So they prepared large batches of baked beans and loaves of brown bread on Saturdays. And the humble baked bean sandwich, which reflects traditional Yankee values, such as practicality, unpretentiousness, and thriftiness has withstood the test of time and continues to be enjoyed by many New Englanders. Um, baked beans then, are the best side for burgers. <laughs> oh yeah. So I thought that was, this is definitely not a pretentious one. Um, no. Like where, where this book goes, <laughs> this particular uh, one is not. Um, but really there's just, there's so many different sandwiches in here. And it, I like that it gives you a little bit of history on them. Um, it's got stuff like Greek salad pita pocket. Um, that Juicy Lucy just really wants me to see it today. Um, then they've got some spread. There's a, this is a, I'm gonna look this up now. Potato chip sandwich, looks like it's got pickles in there. And you know what I'm reading? A uh, pound cake sandwich, that sounds good. All right, let's look up this potato quick, potato chip sandwich. A crunchy, salty, guilty pleasure. So it's known as a crisp sandwich in the United Kingdom. A potato chip sandwich is any sandwich that includes an overlapping layer of potato chips. Many people like to match a flavored chip with a particular sandwich, such as barbecue chips oh. on ham and cheddar. Ooh, salt and vinegar chips on tuna fish and plain chips on peanut butter. Um, interesting. I love and salt and vinegar chips. Yeah, my son actually really likes them too, which is surprising because then yeah. it doesn't seem like a thing a kid would really care for. Um, He's not average. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Um, actually, the, the recipe that we're going to make for the picnic, um, one of the recipes, it's a, a chicken salad with dill. I love Chips putting- This would be great on that. Yes, I put um, kettle cooked, just like regular, like, salted you know just either like sea salt or just plain not like flavored ones mm -hmm. on that it is so good I actually I, I'm working on updating the post on my website because over the years I've like changed things and um it's really good but like the chips inside of it are key in my opinion and it adds a really nice texture because you know like yeah chicken salad's really soft um oh they do have uh pork tenderloin sandwiches in here <laughs> and Here's a picture. This doesn't do it justice. It's usually much bigger. No. But um, they say um, <laughs> this little piggy tastes great. It says also called a breaded pork sandwich or quote the Iowa skinny. This Midwestern favorite is identifiable by a monstrous breaded fried slab of pork tenderloin that overwhelms a hamburger bun or Kaiser roll and is dressed simply with mayo, onion, and pickles. Um, there's a drive-through restaurant or a drive-in restaurant here that has uh, grilled tenderloin sandwiches. Ooh. And they're good with, um, I love it with tartar sauce. Interesting. Good. Yeah. Um, there's one, they do have it in here. So this one is a speedy. I hadn't heard of speedy before a couple of years ago. Um, what is it called? 
S P I E D I E. Speedy. Oh, I thought you were saying like S P E E D Y. Yeah, that's what I thought when I heard it too. Um, so that this one in this book says the sandwich for skewered food. Speedini is the Italian word for a skewer or skewer of chunks of meat, seafood, cheese, or vegetables that's grilled over a flame and cooked under a broiler. A speedy is essentially a spedini served inside of a soft submarine roll and typically drizzled with a special sauce or marinade. The speedy is the signature sandwich of Binghamton, New York, where it was introduced by Italian immigrants sometime in the 1920s. And they go on um, to tell you like the restaurant that's like supposed to be the best one to get it. But so there's a marinade that, um, and we found a recipe online for, uh, for a, a version of it that's really good. It's kind of, it's not quite like the like Italian dressing marinade, but um, you marinate the chicken and then you grill it. And then we like to like reserve some of the marinade that didn't have the raw chicken in it and put that on mm -hmm. the bread too. Um, yeah, it's really interesting. But so this is fun. I mean, it literally any sandwich you could think of will be in here. It's um, such a cute size. It is, it's like a little, little coffee table book. And again, shout out to Matt Armandera's photographer. The book's by Susan Russo. I don't mean to overshadow the um, author. But, and then there's a quote from James Beard on the back. Too few people understand a really good sandwich. <laughs> um, so I thought that was, that was cute. Um, okay, see. grilled cheese. Grilled cheese, yes. <laughs> there's a few grilled cheese books, but this one was particularly great. And I mean, just look at that cheese. That's why they call it the great grilled cheese book. <laughs> G-R-A-T-E. Um, so this book is uh, everything about grilled cheese. And um, he said, the author, Eric Greenspan, says, I didn't come from a family of world travelers and I wasn't raised around any great food. My only true childhood food memory is of my mother putting a plate on top of thin, crispy grilled cheese sandwiches as they cook. They were delicious, especially the little bits of cheese that oozed out and crisped up on the bottom of the hot pan, but you won't find that technique in this book anywhere. So that was kind of funny, like that's his only memory of, of a child, but he ended up working at like very fancy restaurants. Um, so he opened a restaurant called The Foundry on Melrose in 2007. And he says his whole purpose was to kind of, um, that he chose to, hang on, I'll read exactly what he says. Um, I chose to, how do you pronounce, E-S-C-H-E-W, a shoe, a shoe? Probably. <laughs> a highfalutin cheese plate found in every upstart fine dining restaurant at the time in favor of an elevated grilled cheese. I wanted the every man walking by my restaurant to think, hey, I like grilled cheese and wander unbeknownst into a new culinary experience. Um, so he, you know. Oh, I know who he is. I just Googled him to see what he looked like because his name sounded really familiar. I don't actually know what he looks like, maybe. Let's he's, see. um, I think he's been on Guy's Grocery Games. Oh, okay. Is he related to Dory Greenspan? I do not know. I wonder. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, he has a lot of really interesting stuff in this book, and he, um, basically wants you to be able to, uh, make or buy, but you could make every single ingredient from scratch. So he gives you recipes like for the cheese, if you want to make the cheese and stuff like that. Wow. Um, so he says, I know what you're thinking. These recipes are pretty involved for making a grilled cheese sandwich. And you're right. I've given you all the information you need to make every ingredient for each recipe. Should you choose to do that? If you're well, looking to cool. Yeah. It's, and he's not like snobby about it. Cause he says, if you're looking to make a quick and easy grilled cheese, you can use these recipes as guidelines, substituting, adding, or admitting as you like. For me, the grilled cheeses, these grilled cheeses are about having fun and they should be for you too. Um, and he's like, you know, keep in mind, you can make a lot of the components ahead of time, you can buy stuff from the store, you can use leftovers. So, um, but yeah, I mean, that's not like a normal grilled cheese that you would think of. Um, and then it's broken down by type of cheese. So the American section, um, like, you know, starts with a classic, but his classic involves homemade American cheese and white bread and butter. Um, and his American cheese recipe, he's got variations. So you've got your standard American cheese, which is 
solid firm cheddar cheese, finely grated, and firm solid low moisture mozzarella cheese, finely grated, tapioca flour, salt, melted butter, and milk. So I didn't realize, I, I don't know if that's how it's usually made or if this is just his version, but then he has a few different variations. Um, he's got a beer infused American cheese, a sriracha infused American cheese, a pimento American cheese, and a maple American cheese. And he uses those in the other recipes in the section. So for American, he's got the classic, um, the melt fest that has like homemade pickles and it uses the homemade beer cheese, um, bad moon rising. That's, um, two eggs on a roll. Uh, it's got this, the, um, homemade sriracha infused American cheese and bacon and eggs and arugula. Um, and then he gives you tips for just in general for making grilled cheese, like first choose a cheese that melts. <laughs> I love a good Parmesan or other aged cheese, but it has no place in a grilled cheese. If the cheese doesn't melt and I mean gooey melt, save it for a great pasta or cheese board. If you choose a good melting cheese that's difficult to cut into even slices, grate it so you can distribute it evenly. So I thought that was a good tip. Um, he talks about like your bread selection and how like the kind of fancier breads that have a lot of like our, the artisanal breads like air pockets, they're not great for grilled cheese because they have holes and the cheese will leak right out. Um, his preference is to only use butter, not oil or mayo. I, I like using mayo. It spreads really evenly and you get a nice crust, but he talks about like the nutty flavor that the butter gets when you um, griddle it and how that kind of is part of the flavor of it. So there's lots of great recipes per for each cheese. Um, and then he's got like homemade jams and condiments. I would have uh, never considered a muffaletta to be a grilled cheese. <laughs> yeah, I haven't either. So he wrote, um, this is my attempt to capture the essence of one of America's greatest sandwiches, the muffaletta from Central Grocery on Decatur Street in New Orleans, which by the way, I ordered for my husband uh, for Valentine's, Valentine's Day because I had, I had had one in New Orleans. He's never been. Um, and it was amazing. And I was like, you would love this Those sandwich. They're huge. <laughs> They're huge. Um, and my son loved it too. You can order it on Gold Belly um, from Central Grocery. Like they'll make it, you get it the next day. And it's like, it's one that's better when it, I mean, it's on dry ice, but it's better after like, it's kind of marinated because it's got like an olive salad and a lot of cured meats, but the, the olive salad, the oil Yum. and the brine from that soaks into the bread. They, they're on these like massive rolls and they cut them into quarters. So when I had one in New Orleans, I was with my friend, we shared like one wedge and it was huge. Um, yes, you can order them from home. So he said, um, I mimic the oily richness of the bread with homemade focaccia, the brine of the olive salad with olives freshened with citrus zest and the brightness of the jardinera with pickled vegetables. So he kind of, it's like an interpretation. Like this is, it's not, you know, a strict, yeah. Um, there's a section on cheddar. So all grilled cheeses that involve cheddar. Um, this one looks, this is a burger. This is a, a patty melt. I mean, that looks mm -hmm. so nice and melty. Um, so there's cheddar. There is a section on blue cheese. So there's like, he has a sandwich that's a, the cob. So it's kind of like a cob salad, but mm -hmm. in burger form. Um, and it's on cornbread. It's on cornbread. That just, it sounds very crumbly to eat, but I would, I would try. Um, there's the Frenchie. Yeah. There's just some really cute, this one's, it's got a date marmalade and blue cheese, um, and a baguette, uh, bloomy and washed rind cheeses. So there's a whole section for those. Um, it's a lot of very beautiful photography, interesting flavor combinations. Um, Gouda, Gruyere, and Swiss. A section for that. Um, this one, it's like a Thanksgiving situation. Um, that one's called the Gobbler. And it's, um, it's a great way to use your Thanksgiving leftovers. And he's telling you like you can substitute cranberry sauce for the tapenade and green bean casserole 
day old green bean casserole for the fried shallots and green beans. So just like a Thanksgiving sandwich. Um, but if you make it as written, he makes a cranberry olive tapenade that sounds delicious. Um, and then in the back. You must not use my favorite cheese for a grilled cheese. I love Colby Jack. Oh, it's yeah. really stringy and yum. I don't think that's in here. He's got wild cards at the end. Um, Munster, Cotija, Jack, not Colby Jack, though, but um, Jack, Feta, and a fromage blanc with on brioche with chocolate hazelnut spread and rum soaked banana. Just some interesting, interesting ones. I like that he threw in a, a sweet thing at the end too. Um, so this is a, an interesting book, lots of interesting grilled cheese things. There is controversy online that a grilled cheese, by definition, is just cheese and any other ingredients inside of it make it a melt, not a grilled cheese. But I say, don't be a food snob, just <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Call it what you want. <laughs> Yeah, call it, call it whatever, but mm -hmm. it's, you know. Um, so we're almost at the end. So I'll just like a couple of quick, I'm always like, I'm gonna go over this quick. Ooh, but look at this sandwich. <laughs> um, uh, this one was interesting. This is called the Big New York Sandwich Book. And it has a bunch of, there's not a ton of photos in it. There's some, there's more photos of the chefs, but uh, from restaurants in New York, um, and they tell you, it tells you a little bit about the restaurant and they give you a recipe for a sandwich made from their restaurant. So um, interesting if there's like somebody, like a, a chef that you have been to their restaurant and you would like to recreate it. Um, there's different sections. There's a section for Asian sandwiches, um, rustic sandwiches, uh, deli sandwiches, seafood sandwiches and sweet sandwiches. Um, so this is kind of interesting. It's it's to me without a bunch of photos of the recipes, it's not quite as enticing personally. Um, the Bon Mi Handbook, which I actually learned from this book, it's pronounced Bun Mi. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and the author is Vietnamese, and I had no idea. Um, yeah. I've never heard anybody say it that way. I haven't either. That's why I'm really like I want to believe it, but I'm like also. <laughs> probably still gonna say bon me. Um, but if you're not familiar, it's a, a French Vietnamese kind of hybrid sandwich that usually involves like a baguette type of bread. Um, a lot of times it's got a pate uh, and then some, some like deli type of meat or grilled meats, lots of fresh vegetables and pickled items and fresh herbs. But this book is great because it goes all into the different types of bread. If you want to make your own, what to look for at the store if you're baking it. I love that for making your own. So that's what it looks like. But they show you exactly how to roll it to get the right shape. Mm. Um, the, they talk about pantry items. Uh, one thing I thought was interesting, I've seen this before, Maggie sauce or Maggie um, salt seasoning. And apparently it says for first class bun me drizzle on Maggie seasoning sauce. It will boost each bite with an umami hit. At supermarkets, find it near the browning sauces and gravy enhancers or in the Latino food section. Chinese and Viet grocers shelve it with the soy sauces. Um, and it, it says, yeah, I've, I've looked in some of the recipes and it's like you just, you drizzle it on. So there's some, um, pictures of assembling it. Uh, the author goes into how to make a lot of the things ahead of time, like the meats. Uh, there's a few recipes for homemade sausages. There's um, a whole section about homemade mayo that was really interesting. And she makes a few different flavored mayos um, and homemade pickles. There, I thought this was interesting too. They've got, I'm not super into the flavor of pate. It's a little gamey for me. So she has um, recipes for homemade using like chicken livers or pork livers, but she also has one for edamame pate, which I thought was interesting. So it's a vegetarian one and it uses frozen shelled edamame and green onions and garlic and stuff. Um, mm. And she's got like homemade sausages 
and chicken and stuff, but she also had, and seafood, even though she says it's not traditional. Um, again, she's kind of like, you know, it's all about using what you have and making interesting sandwiches. Feel free to experiment. But there's a tofu, a baked magi tofu. So she said, can you turn tofu into a vegetarian cold cut suitable for sandwiches? Yes, you can. So I'll give you ways to do that. Um, very, very informative book. Lots of really good information in here. This happy sandwich book. It's got a lot of really fun sandwiches. Um, one that stood out uh, that I saw right before. Well, there's a jalapeno popper grilled cheese, which just sounds fantastic. <laughs> um, there is hot, hot dog grilled, guacamole grilled cheese. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, Oh, I know it's the one that I wanted to show you. We were talking about pickles earlier. There's a section mm. in this for no bun sandwiches. New York City deli pickle sandwich. <laughs> it's uh, pastrami on extra large pickles with Russian dressing and Swiss cheese. Like, it's so ridiculous. I love it. Um, like a glamour pickle treat. Yeah. Well, very <laughs> glamorous though. Um, and then... Uh, my comedy pick for the evening is this a super upsetting cookbook about sandwiches <laughs> and this is another one that I picked up not realizing I'm not friends with this photographer but I follow him and he follows me on Instagram um no effects no f-e-c-k-s not no effects but um <laughs> the pictures are gorgeous there's a lot of really fun sandwiches the commentary is hilarious the author has a sandwich at least I think a couple of sandwich places in New York and it's very kind of like self-deprecating and whatever and there's jokes throughout so like the meatloaf section meatloaf but I won't do that <laughs> like, <laughs> it's it's very funny um and he's got like the sandwich names are hilarious um I like uh, the title of the book <laughs> the title of the book is funny so one of the book one of the sections recipes in the meatloaf section the sandwich is called this article is about meatloaf for the singer see meatloaf <laughs> um and he and each underneath each title the serving size is hilarious so like um the so this spread this sandwich, the number, it's called the number two best new sandwich in America in 2012, according to the Huffington Post. <laughs> and the servings is makes four terrible and unhealthy sandwiches. And <laughs> he talks about his sandwich from his sandwich shop was named the number two, a couple of years in a row, he got put on the list of best new sandwiches in America. And it's hilarious. And he talks about like the online comments all fall into four categories. These sandwiches all look terrible. These all are terrible, and I have a much better idea that involves avocados and onions. Better sandwich ideas always involve avocados and onions, and often bacon. Professional sandwich makers, take note. <laughs> um, it's it's so funny. Another sandwich uh, serving size, um, Lazaro's Revenge. The serving size is makes four breakfast sandwiches that you can eat at any time of the day if you don't have anything better to do. Like, I the <laughs> sandwiches fall apart is makes four precious sandwiches. I just, it's so funny. He talks about roast beef. Um, there's a section that's got like these kind of fun old illustrations. And mm -hmm. so like roast beef, there's, you know, four different, each section has four different sandwiches that use that ingredient. But like, he's got the basic recipe for roast beef and he starts out the section with, I know every chef on TV says that if you don't get a nice sear on your roast beef, you won't walk in the juices and it will make the children cry but they are lying to you because they are insecure and don't make decisions for themselves. You can make your own decisions, so try something different. Do you caramelize the cucumbers for your cucumber salad? No, why not? It will seal the juices in and taste better. How stupid does that sound, right? <laughs> so it's just, it's so, it's snarky, it's funny. It's the, the number seven sub club uh, makes four subs. Mitch Hedberg would not have let me into his sandwich club with this one. But it's awesome nonetheless. And how can a sub shop make a real club sandwich anyway? Because the club sandwich has like the extra layers. 
Um, subs are inherently not a club sandwich, but if you can suspend your disbelief, this has all of the ingredients of a club sandwich, just a little screwed up. And I propose that we put chips on the sandwich. So <laughs> mm -hmm. anyway, this book was hilarious. And I always end up either intentionally or unintentionally finding kind of like a comedic cookbook. Um, <laughs> anyway, I like it. <laughs> I, it, it was very entertaining. Um, and I didn't even, I didn't read all of it yet, but it's, it's very funny. And he's a trained chef and, you know, has successful restaurants and uh, it's just, it's very funny. Um, so Tuesday, two weeks from today, Tuesday, May 24th at six, we're going to be making the Vietnamese shrimp sandwiches with peanut sauce. Um, if you don't eat shellfish or seafood um, or you just don't like shrimp, you can have another type of already cooked like if you want to do uh, grilled chicken or something, if you want to have that already ready to go that we could put on, um, that's fine. Uh, it would probably be good with just the veggies and the peanut sauce too, honestly, um, or like grilled tofu. Uh, and then next month we'll be talking about picnics, um, June 7th at 7 p.m. for the cookbook discussion and June 21st at six for the chicken salad with dill sandwich that I say has great, uh, is great with chips on it and veggie cream cheese follow-ups. So thank you very much for joining and have a great evening. Thank you. You too. Thank you.